Oh, man. Yeah, it was funny to see it one last time. There's a part of me, I'm going to say it out here now, which uh, means that we're not going to do it, but it would have been funny. I think it would have been really funny if we just did one more reaction to Benny Sakura one more time, <laughs> where we just rewatched <laughs> the arc and talked about it again. <laughs> We're like, last right. time, Benny Zakura. Benny Zakura, we're seeing it again. The <laughs> it would be really funny if like every uh every like hundred episodes of Gintama, we just went back and did Benny Zakura again. <laughs> <laughs> that would oh that would be really good. That'd be really fun. Actually, you know what? We should start doing that for whenever we get into a series. <laughs> whenever it's been long enough. Or maybe just we'll... every every um every Shonen Archive April Fool's video is just the Benny Zakura arc. Oh. Fuck. Every year. Yes! 100% yes! We just watched the Benny Zucker again! God damn it! Oh, that's so good. I'm cutting this off of the podcast and putting it at the end of it so I remember for April 1st. <laughs> Hello everyone and welcome back to Shonen Archive. I'm Woki and I'm here with Zenron. Hello. What Shonen Archive? I'm glad you asked. Shonen Archive is a series in which me and Zen have dedicated ourselves to talking about every single Shonen Jump anime and thing that is adjacent to uh, to anime because eventually we have to watch some of the live action stuff versions of some of these animes. In the case of City Hunter, it's the only thing that's widely available to us is the Korean dramas and the Jackie Chan movie. <laughs> I don't think the anime ever got <laughs> fully translated for us in any good capacity. So we're going to have to add that copy out. And we plan to do this until one of us gets taken down and then the series ends. We'll see who it is every single time i bring this up i'm like who's gonna go out first <laughs> me or sen find out uh and today what are we going to be talking about well today is very special because it's april fool's day and what a better time <laughs> to do for april fools than to talk about the benny zucker arc one more time that's right me and zen have re-watched again tama a new retelling of benny zucker arc again <laughs> and we will be talking about <laughs> The next year will be the live action version. <laughs> next year will be the live action version. <laughs> and we will keep watching the Benny Sakura arc every April Fool's Day until we somehow just forget to do it one year. <laughs> <laughs> so what's the Benny Sakura arc? I'm so glad you asked. It's time to do a full-on history breakdown of what the Benny Sakura arc is. <laughs> So, what's Benny Zakra? Well, Benny Zakra is the, one of the first major arcs in Gintama. That's right. Uh, originally, a episode arc that was around five episodes in length, if I can remember correctly. I don't know why I'm trying to remember this straight from the dome when I can actually just look and see how many episodes was Benny Zakra arc. Um, uh, it was anime episodes 58 to 61, and then there was an aftermath episode, which is 62. And in terms of volumes, it was 11 to 12, two volumes in length, and it was the it's the first big uh, Gintama arc. It's also, in the history of Shonen Archive, the first big Gintama arc that we watched and went like, damn, Gintama's really fucking sick, actually. And it also is the, cert the first time that everyone said, just wait, there's more. And they were right. <laughs> so they were very right. They yeah. were 100% correct. But this is where a lot of... It's, it's, the, it's the turning point for a lot of people where in the early days of Gintama, it can be very difficult for many people to kind of watch it. We thankfully did not have that issue that much. We just kind of enjoyed the comedy because we had been told for years how difficult it actually was to get into Gintama. So we went in there bracing. And other than... One of the worst episodes in the entire series that we've ever seen, which is the one that was focused on Elizabeth and uh, Sadaharu. <laughs> it wasn't that all that bad, <laughs> except for yeah, that one episode. That, that is a rough episode. That is a very rough episode, and it was very bad. And that is basically the Ben and Zucker. So, of course, it's one of the most famous arcs, and of course, it was eventually... Actually, it was, they kept doing this April Fool's joke in, not even April Fool's, it was just a joke that they kept doing that they were going to do a live action Benny Zucker movie, and eventually they memed it so hard, they actually just did it. 
And that's what we're going to be talking about today. So Zen, it's just going to be one of the many, many, many times you're going to have to tell us what happened in Benny Zakura, but go ahead and tell us what happened in this movie. So uh, the movie is pretty much just a one-for-one of the actual arc. Um, Gintoki meets the swordsmith siblings and uh, gets hit by a hammer and then they're kind of talking and like oh the someone stole the demon sword and we need you to stop them and um then katsura is attacked in the street by a mysterious individual who supposedly kills him um elizabeth is very distraught by this everyone kind of decides they're going to go try to find out what happened um they all they all go out looking for him and then they are attacked by the mysterious individual who is then intercepted by Gintoki. And it's revealed that the person is Nizo, the blind samurai from some other arc I don't remember anymore because it's been it, so long. It was a very long time ago. But yeah, I think it, it, it was, was the baby was arc. The... You're right. It was when, yeah, it was baby Gintoki. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ba- baby Toki, who, who makes yeah. a cameo here at the end here. He's one of the characters um, who shows up all the way at the end. <laughs> that's very funny. Yeah. Um, and so they, they fight, Gintoki loses, uh, he's saved at the last minute by intervention from Shinpachi, and then um, Kagura goes off to try to find Katsura while Gintoki is healing, and she's captured by Takasuji's group, who uh, is, is making these Benizakura swords to try to overthrow the government, and then it turns out the swordsmith that hired Gintoki was actually on Takasuji's side. They're like, uh, they're trying to get data for the sword to make it stronger. Um, eventually, the swordsmith's sister comes and tries to hire him, but he's severely wounded, and Ote refuses to let him go. Um, so he, he's like, fine i'll just stay or whatever you know and then she uh leaves him her favorite umbrella and says that if you're going to go out in the rain you can take my favorite umbrella but make sure that it comes back to me like you know the whole i like this thing so don't die um so that you know you can return it to me Mm -hmm. uh he does end up going out after them as well we see that Shinpachi and Elizabeth have located Takasuji's group, and Elizabeth helps Shinpachi get on board by holding some of Takasuji's men at gunpoint with a giant cannon out of her mouth. Um, he arrives to rescue Kagura just in time because they put Kagura up on a cross, and they're like, "Haha, you're gonna you're gonna shoot your friend because Katsura's other guys come up to like fight them because they still think Katsura is dead." And they're like, she must be working with you guys, right? And then they're like, we have no idea who that is. So they just keep shooting cannon fire at them. Uh, eventually, they Shinpachi and Kagura fall off the ship, only to be grabbed by Elizabeth at the last minute, who is then beheaded by Takasuji. But then it turns out it was just a costume. And it was Katsura in the Elizabeth costume the whole time. He's still alive. Um... Elizabeth, the actual one, and the rest of Katsura's crew attack the ship uh, in a very funny image where it's just a ship ramming it with Elizabeth, like, standing at the front of it with her arms <laughs> crossed. It's very funny. Also dressed like um, uh, Katsura also, which I Yes, thought... in Katsura's with a wig and Katsura's, like, clothes on. Yeah. Um, and then Gintoki and the swordsmith sister are on the way. Swordsmith sister gives him the, the poop sword. The sword that has the dragon on its handle that looks like poop. Um, they also infiltrate, and Gintoki starts fighting Nizo again to defeat the Benizakura. Nizo goes into some kind of crazy monster mode, uh, and the brother ends up sacrificing himself because he learns the error of his ways. Uh, and Gintoki and Kagura and Shinpachi end up defeating the Benizakura sword. And while Katsura is like talking to Takasuji. Then the Harusame aliens attack, and we get a big battle scene where Gintoki and Katsura hold off the aliens while the rest of them escape, and then they jump off of the boat and sail back to Edo with a big parachute that looks like Elizabeth's face. Mm-hmm. And then there is, of course, the ending bit 
of the so the new stuff that was added the begin the beginning of the movie they talk about starting the movie um which is like, they they talk about start it's it's really funny cuz they they say okay let's start the movie and then they stop the movie and then they go like okay well well, well hold, hold, hold up when are we actually going to start this movie and then they start the movie again which is really cuz they keep using the same Warner Brothers logo opening <laughs> over and over and over again um, and then at the end it, co- it comes back where they have a preview for the next, uh, movie that they say they're gonna do, which is the Shinsen Gumi movie, which when the first time we saw this, I-, I think we had not seen Okita's sister at all yet, so it was actually funny. No, was, I don't like, think so, yeah. So it was actually funny, it was like, oh, it's them, I actually knew more about the things that they were showing, because we knew more about the Shinsen Gumi now, from this point, um... But then it's revealed, like, okay, you're making a fake one, and they start arguing with them, saying, like, hey, how dare you make a fake trailer? What kind of, who has, what kind of, what kind of person just makes a fake trailer for a movie, forgetting that they had been doing that for years? Um, and yeah, then, and it, then they're like, uh, if, you know, if we actually make the movie, it won't be a fake trailer anymore. <laughs> It'll be a real one. It will. Uh, and then that brings in the cavalcade of everyone to say, like, hey, here's my movie, they pitch it, and that's where you get all the cameos for everyone. Which is maybe, I, I didn't realize this when the the joke did not hit as hard until we've gotten this far. When Ryoma shows up and says, hey, is everyone, am I late for the movie? And then they go, like, <laughs> why don't you stick to the opening and ending? Oh, yeah, they're like, all you have to worry about is the opening and the ending. <laughs> <laughs> Which is funny because they actually did save him for the ending. <laughs> he doesn't show up until the end. Uh, oh, real good joke. And then that also brings out the actual Warner Brothers to come out, <laughs> who are, they say is like one, it's like a super niche reference to, not niche, I guess if you're in Japan, you know who they are. But we're not Japanese, so it's niche to us, <laughs> the Japanese brothers. Uh, and then the movie uh, actually ends. And then there's also just one other bit. They do the thing that Gintama does a lot, which was the playing the uh op over uh, things of everything you've seen in the movie and then elizabeth shows up and says like okay that's it seriously movie yep. over now yep and that's benny zakura arc zen how do you feel about the benny zakura arc now that we are halfway at the halfway point of gintama now <laughs> uh it's still good it's still good Mm -hmm. for a lot of it in the beginning i was like did this need to exist do they have to make a movie about it because it's (laughs) it's really just the same Um, it is very similar except for the parts where the shinsengumi are added because shinsengumi because they're popular yeah yeah yeah. uh it is a lot of the very similar things (laughs) yeah a lot of it is very much the same um and then it was like okay you know maybe it's fine when they got to the um the uh bit where he gets the umbrella mm-hmm. and i was like all right this is pretty good and then he started fighting nizo and i was like all right i could see why they would have made this and then uh bakshi dancer kicked in and i was like beating my chest like yes <laughs> <laughs> yes this is the best thing ever uh so it's like you know you don't have to watch a lot of it but at the same time it's a great it's, movie. It's pretty good. Yeah, it's a it's great once it, it's it is really funny just because of how often they reference this arc. I feel like you just kind of know what's going on in the arc, so it's actually perfect for just putting up and going like, "All right, let me just look up what's currently going on." Oh, okay, I remember this part. This is the part where Shinpachi is now hanging out. They're doing the sensei bit. Go go thirteen, perfect, love it. <laughs> Let's look down a little bit, and the fighting starts again. It ends up being perfect for that, and. They actually made sure to make it like sixteen by nine. That's the one uh, one thing that's very different is that obviously original Gintama is still in four by three, so they actually did the full on making it sixteen by nine, so it looks a great at full screen. Um, and yeah, just eventually by the end of it, you just kind of get drawn back into Benny Zakra. It, it 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 does like this magical spell on you as it just kind of goes through it, and it just really is a super good solid arc that you can just kind of see and it's like the perfect length of something that you can just sit down and watch and it's not also except for the the bit with the brother it's not also super heavy dark like a lot of the really good later uh gintama arcs are where they get really dark near the end <laughs> which can make maybe yeah, rewatching no, it it's, it's like um your standard 
dark, you know, like, oh, yeah. the guy learned a good lesson and, and died in the process of saving his sister. And you're like, oh, yeah. And that's like it. You know? Yeah. Yeah. You're just go- it's, it's not like uh, Yoshiwara in flames where you're just going like, God damn. Yeah. Or, or, where it just doesn't stop. Yeah. Or the spider arc where you're just like, God damn. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, this is great, but also, damn, man, <laughs> this is so much. It's a, the, it's a perfect entry point. It makes a lot of sense for me for why they would make this into a movie to be just like here. And like you and the other thing that I realize is that the same thing when they when they the song kicks in, I'm like, oh, I would love to see this in theaters. <laughs> just to experience it in a full on big ass environment, but unfortunately it's never I've missed my chance. I can't go back in time. And if I did go back in time, it would be very funny if I went back in time to go to a Japanese theater to check out. <laughs> to watch yeah, to watch this. To watch Betty Zucker are gonna really confuse a bunch of Japanese Gintama fans confuse why a Mexican man is doing in Japan in the year two thousand ten <laughs> just to watch the Gintama movie. Uh but that's what I use. But yeah, it's a it's a, still a fantastic art. I really like seeing it on the second go through because it does also help kind of put in a lot of cool things into it, like Takasuji's a lot of his stuff. Like I, it's easy to forget, especially with how far we in, just because of how he only really shows up with the OPs and EDs, except for the most recent arc that we had. Um, like, this arc, single-handedly, along with the previous episode that, that he was in, just completely is the reason why Takatsuji is such, such a popular character. And is constantly just at the top. I'm like, oh yeah, that's right. He just fucking is such a good foil for Gintoki. And like kind of like the opposite kind of like mindset of what he has. Where Gintoki is someone who has... They both kind of suffered for the same things for the war. But Takasuji is someone who is unable to actually let go. And he has decided that he would rather just burn everything. Just because he's lost someone very precious to him. Where Gintoki is someone who has realized that, yes, it hurts that I've lost someone. But you have to move on. Because that's the only real way to kind of move on and go forward. And the fact that uh, Gintoki is like that and Katsar can see, like, yeah, I want to be like you so bad... But then I look at him, and he has every reason to be exactly like you, and he's not you. And that's enough for me to kind of want to be in the same path as you, as, as him. So I think it's a very... Man, such good fucking characters getting dumb ass. <laughs> Yeah, they really do. They really do. Yeah, so layered as well. I also really like uh, just remembering, just because his theme is so amazing. I realized it through here, is that... When they're talking about the Benny Zakra, they use his theme, like the 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 Takatsuji theme, but they only use like the beginning part. And I only realize now is that they only do the the big breakdown whenever it's like the crazy, like they find like the perfect drop moment for when Takatsuji is like at his absolute like like most mental and actually there's danger coming. So it's kind of like a rattlesnake, uh, like the sound of a rattlesnake shakes, where it's just like a warning. And then when it's actually time to attack, that's when the fucking beat drops and then you, everything fucking goes crazy. <laughs> really well done. But yeah, Benny's Hawker arc. I can see why they keep making this over and over again. And they <laughs> have not stopped making this over and over again. Oh, uh, man. Um, I will say one more thing. Do you think, now that we're on the topic of this, just because, just to talk more about movies that have specifically taken arcs and done something else with it, um, do you think, how do you, how different do you think it would be if it was something similar to, like, how, because you remember the old Dragon Ball movies that were, like, retelling an arc, but then it's not exactly, like, the, the Blood Rupees. The, yeah, the, where it's, like, sort of retelling an arc, but it's, but it's very different. Mm-hmm, it's very different. Do you think that it, this would still work if they had done that exact same thing. What would have been the changes besides just adding more of the Shinsengumi into it? <laughs> would that been... It definitely would have had a lot more of the Shinsengumi in it. Mm. Um, Takasuji probably would have been a more active enemy. Like, he probably would have fought someone at some point. Yeah, you're right. They uh, probably would have been, like, a slight fight between him and Katsur, even though I think it actually makes sense for them to have, like, an actual just, like, dialogue talk between them. You're, yeah. Yeah. But I don't know. I don't know that they would have changed a ton other than that. Um, it is... There's only so much you really can, you know? Yeah. It's like, it, it's the thing that I'm trying to think of, of like, yeah, it's really not a series where it's like, 
you can't just like plug and play a lot of the characters like it works for dragon ball because it's like oh yeah we can just have this character here slightly like we can have maybe krillin show up a little bit earlier and it's fine uh but for gintama it really does feel like a lot of these characters are here for a specific reason and that kind of goes with the arc itself so it's actually very hard to imagine them like, oh yeah, besides the Shinsengumi, which they do, to be fair, they add them in the beginning, but then they don't actually interfere in the story, because this is also focused in with Katsura and Takatsuji, so it's kind of in the mind of like, well, obviously if they're here, they would see that Katsura is up to it, and then therefore they would need to... Like, there's a lot of, like, logistic issues here where it's like, well, now if they're interfering with him, they wouldn't really team up with them. So then what happens there? So maybe it's a thing of, like, they would have more stuff to do on the actual... Not the boat itself, but beforehand. So it's like, I'm trying... I, I was trying to think about it. I was like, yeah, you're right, that there isn't a lot to change for it. But at the same time, it's funny to think about, like, they just took an arc out of it, and it just kind of works. Like, outside uh -huh. of everything else. Like, it just perfectly works, and there's not, like, that much they have to change about it. And the only things they do add is just, like, weird little fan service moments, like seeing um, Kagura's brother. It's like, this this doesn't really affect the story at all, but it's just more for people to be like, oh, yeah, here's, I guess, what's something that could have been happening during this, and you can see him there, and it doesn't really impact the story all that much, but you just see that, okay, this is what they were doing during these events and stuff like that it wouldn't be a case of just like he just shows up there to fight for some reason <laughs> like that's not really the kind of series that gintama actually is yeah you just can't really have a character that pops in just to sort of like exist you know what i mean yeah 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 it's a uh, it's a tough thing to think about but it is also a funny thing to think about but there you go that is benny sakura feel free to tell us how you feel about benny sakura and we will be getting back to regular Shonen Archive. So let's do the bit here. We talk about what's going to be happening next on uh, Shonen Archive. Obviously next year, we're going to be talking about the live-action Gintama movie, which is based off of the Benny Zakura arc. <laughs> so look forward a year from now as we talk about Benny Zakura one more time. But before then, uh, we need to talk about what we're going to be doing for next week. So here's the current status of everything. One, Kuroko. There's a lot of episodes to go through. <laughs> yes. We need to find the perfect window to talk about it. I was surprised that I was able to find the perfect window for it, but that's because I was completely off of Twitter and waiting for Like a Dragon to finish. So we still need to wait the perfect time I'm for Zen to sit down and, and rewatch it again, even though he's already seen it. I think it would be better for him to see it again, just so because he's usually the one who actually does the full breakdowns of everything so i can remember my feelings because my feelings were holy shit this is amazing <laughs> but in terms of actually describing what's happening in the episode i think it's better for the wait for it to be as good as the arc itself was i want to wait until zen sees it so he can perfectly know what's going uh, on in the episodes as we go in and for gintama we should hopefully be back to the regular schedule uh starting this week at some point i think my work was crazy on the week that i missed everything and things have gotten a little bit better but that doesn't mean that there's a chance for it to not go crazy um so we still have the same plans as always to see the same episodes let me see if i can actually find the i'm, I'm almost positive it has not changed just because we have not had time to see the episode so it's still the same that I sent off last time so many <laughs> months ago. <laughs> Not a month ago, but many long time ago. Let me see. Let me go back here. Uh, let's see. I'm not sure. I don't think it's 221 to 225. But, you know, just to be sure, let me double check here. Let me go back. You can tell that it's really been a bit since we... I've been thinking about wanting to... Get, I keep thinking, man, we need to go back. We need to go back. Okay, I remember. It's 221 to 225. That is the... No, it's 221 to 226. Yes. The reason okay. is, is that it has to be the Junga mark. And then... There's another tiny arc with GL arc, so that's where it ends. So it would be six episodes. And then after that, it would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5... Five episodes, which would feature the crossover with Skit Dance, another tiny two-episode arc, and then two random off episodes, and then we'll be back to another big five-episode arc. So that's the way it has to currently go. So it's going to be six episodes, five episodes, 
and then another six episodes because we're in the nitty gritty here as we get closer to the end as we start bunching a lot of these together to get finished with Gintama. Still plan to hopefully be done with Gintama by the end of 2024. <laughs> That's the current that plan. Very the current clutch. Line. That would be very clutch. Yes. Uh, not because we're trying to push it off and see it. It's just because I want to keep watching Gintama and reach the yeah, end. Yeah, Gintama kind of bangs. It really does. It really does. And then obviously once we're done, it will be no more Gintama except for every April Fool's Day and whenever the new series that they're currently uh, cooking. <laughs> every April Fool's Day from now on. From now on until we forget. I will guarantee you there will be something related to Benny Zakra. Be, someone's going to point it out, too, when we forget. They're going to be like, oh my god, you <laughs> forgot to do Benny Zakra. And we're going to be like, god. Damn it. <laughs> but then I'll always, I'll always remember in the back, because if there's anything I remember, it's that I remember a joke. <laughs> so I will gladly <laughs> keep doing something until something happens. And then at that point, it will be different iterations, live action Benny Zakra, manga version of Benny Zakra. The, 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 every diff, every whatever different forms that we can find it in, we will find a way to talk about Benny Zakra until we loop again back Benny Zakra to the movie. fan fictions online. If you have a, I know I, there has to be someone who has just the, the, the maybe that's where it's gonna start to go. If you know any fan fictions and set in during the events of the Benny Zakra arc, please link it to me so that it could be <laughs> saved for a future uh, April Fool's Day Benny Zakra special. <laughs> <laughs> oh, needed. 100% needed. We're going to have to lock in for the next year until eventually one of us goes out. In which case, then, the other person has to go to the other one's funeral and talk about the Benny Zakra. Just give a quick <laughs> plot <laughs> explanation. The at the funeral? <laughs> yes! I will explain it <laughs> to my mom that I said, I have a friend coming in when I pass because as I'm dying on my deathbed, I said, you have to let him explain the ending of the movie. <laughs> He's going to talk about the Benny Zakara arc in Gintama. You need to just let it happen. You just got to let him, just let him talk. Play bocce dancer. Uh, <laughs> over the speakers. Yes, as I'm being lowered down into the, <laughs> into the ground. It can play. And then that will finally be the end of Shadow Dark Guy. That will be the final... <laughs> I will allow. That's the only time I'll ever live live action footage of me being shown is me, me being lowered in the casket as Buck she could dance her place in the background. <laughs> uh, and then he could say Shonen finally archived. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, it'll fade to black and it'll just say archive. Yep, archive. The final archive. <laughs> that will be perfect. So look forward to that over the next couple years, everybody. <laughs> Hopefully longer than a couple of years. No, I plan to get out of here in the next five. I don't plan to live that long. I've been here long enough, I think. Yeah, you know, I've had a pretty good kick of it. <laughs> I think I've had a solid performance <laughs> review. It's time to punch out. <laughs> I'm done. I'm retiring. <laughs> permanently all right everyone thank you very much for watching if you want to find zen that's right that's the other thing i forgot if you want to find more zen you can always go to zen channel where he'll talk about shonen and chill uh where currently stuff is going on in the monk world obviously the, the the big thing that happened which happened while we were off screen was obviously the passing away of akira toriyama which uh had a huge impact on a lot of stuff like oh for example oda finally taking a break of three weeks because he went damn i really should be taking care of my health which all of them should be uh because stuff like that should not have happened at all with a lot of the mangaka that have to work in the conditions that they do so i always say take as much breaks as you need because i would much rather have them around than to have constant week up up updates of manga is currently mm -hmm. how i feel absolutely 100%. But yeah, there's also other um, actual manga contents happening. I mean, other than Jujutsu Kais. I mean, yeah, the plenty of stuff is ending. My Hero looks like it might actually be ending. <laughs> yeah, My Hero's got to be on its, on its death throes right now. There can't be too much left of it. Oh, just wait till Miguel shows up in My Hero. And, <laughs> <laughs> and the fight gets extended just that much longer. <laughs> There was one more waiting for him. <laughs> He's got the anti-quirk rope. 
Oh, that would be sick. If he just showed up and started fucking throwing hands with him as he tried to go for the decay, so it's like, ha, uh, 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 doesn't work. <laughs> he just starts beating the I shit. I fought Gojo once off screen in the prequel. <laughs> exactly. Cut to all the times that he just got his shit absolutely rocked in the movie. <laughs> Even though when we talked about Jujutsu Kaisen Zero, actually, it was like, that's actually very impressive. Most people would just instantly fucking die <laughs> if they yeah, took that many explode, punches. explode, like, into a mist. Yeah, they they 100% would. <laughs> it's just really funny to think about, like, man, they took a lot of beating, but it's like, that ass, the fact that they're still alive after that ass beating is actually something to be commended, but also you should not be hyping up by someone by saying, damn, <laughs> look at this ass beating they took. <laughs> yeah, no, it's not great. <laughs> no, but you do what you can. <laughs> uh, so yeah, go over to Zen's channel for that. If you want some more me content, there's plenty of uh, me videos going up now. Now that I finally finished work, we and my brother recorded a bunch of Fugo videos, and then of course we have a bunch of Sonic Adventure videos. And I still plan to keep releasing a bunch of other videos as well soon too. Uh, when the strike, when the need hits me. Um, kind of want to record some Pokemon TCG videos, but I've also run into the issue of I don't know what to run anymore. So <laughs> I'm a yeah, man. I'm that's, a. That's the tough thing, right? Yeah, I'm a man without a deck. They they took they took my Gardevoir and they took they took I, my deck. I think Gardevoir is still functional. It's not yeah. as, as ridiculous as it used to be. Okay, let me put it this way: it went from an amazing deck to a functional deck. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it it was a top like three yes. last format. So it makes it like... e extremely frustrating when you're playing it and you're losing to a deck and you're like, if I just had my fucking other <laughs> version of this deck, you would have been so unbelievably cooked. And that's the part where it's like it feels weird playing it right now. Um, and that was a shame because that was one of my favorite decks. And so I've been going with Iron Hands, and Iron Hands is a very fun deck, but it's also a very like uh, very easy to stop if you actually know what you're doing. <laughs> Uh -huh. And also, sometimes yeah. you just brick, and you're just like, well, I opened up a single Iron Hands, three electric generators, and two electric energies, so I think I just lose here. <laughs> I, <laughs> I don't win. Yeah, that's the worst for me, is like, I hate inconsistency in decks, and when I, when I draw a hand that is like unplayable, I'm immediately like, well, I'm done for the day, I think. <laughs> I've had. I think I'll take a break. Yeah, and that's unfortunately because that that deck is 100% just a lot of inconsistencies. It is a deck that in theory should not work, but it somehow does, and it's very funny when it does. Uh, but it ends up where you have just some games where they're just non games, where it's just like, well, didn't draw anything. Go ahead, sir, your turn. And then it's like, well, I I'm playing your deck, and it turns out I hit it. So here you go. I'm about yeah, to. Yeah, or for it's a mirror match, and I drew well, and you did not. Yeah, and that happened to me uh, last night, where it's like this is a mirror match. And I'm like, I can see why after losing a single time to this deck, why you would switch to the Snorlax deck. <laughs> it just completely <laughs> stops it. <laughs> yeah, the Snorlax deck is very funny. It is. It is the ultimate. Just like I am, just tired of everyone. And I'm going to... We're, we're playing at my pace now. Yeah. <laughs> which, which is not a pace at all. There is no pace anymore. My win condition is, is that you give up because you realize you can't win. Yep. Technically, it's decking you out, but it rarely gets to that point. <laughs> Most of the time, people are like, oh, okay. Yeah. Or in my I've case... i of that, I think. Or in my case, when I went against you, I decked myself out. Yeah. And said, uh, you went down with the ship. Yeah, exactly. It would be like as if the guy in the Titanic said, you know what? May as well get this done quick. <laughs> Drove it even faster into the iceberg. <laughs> the iceberg harder. That's me. If I was the guy on the Titanic, I would have been like, alright. So let's make sure that everyone just like goes down with the ship then. Let's just full throttle, full thrusters ahead, everyone. <laughs> Brace for impact. We're going to hit the shit out of this iceberg. <laughs> We're doomed. I have to go down with the ship. Who says that you can't? <laughs> so let's go. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, I'm trying to figure out uh, the right deck for that and still doing everything. And I've been uh, playing some other stuff. I have two monitors now. So maybe now I can probably get yeah, back into... Yeah, monitors bangs. It does. I need to get back to Final Fantasy VII because I started going through original Final Fantasy and said, I'm going to try and beat all these mainline games. And then I, at a certain point I realized after I beat six, I have to go back to seven, but I was streaming seven. So I, <laughs> <laughs> so I need to go back to streaming seven. <laughs> so a lot of things going on in the Wookiee land. We'll see how much of it actually gets recorded, but hopefully soon. 
some more. But there's plenty of videos going up now. And considering that I used to usually only do like three videos because of how busy I am, it, there's an insane amount of videos coming out. I'm not sure when it's actually going to end. I have to start releasing two at a time <laughs> to get it out quicker. <laughs> it will never cease. Yeah, at some point it will stop. I just don't know when. <laughs> so <laughs> please check them out. Uh... And yeah, that's it for Shadow Archive this week, everyone. Thank you very much for watching us. Have a happy April Fool's Day. We'll be back next week to talk about hopefully some more. Either Gintama or Koriko. We'll see. Either one of them would be fine with me. But chances are it will be Gintama if it's between one of the two of them. <laughs> Most likely. Yeah. yeah. If, if it comes down to it. Yeah. Push comes to shove. Yeah, it, it just ends up being that Kuroko has so many episodes to go through. <laughs> it's very, like, you look at it and go, like, I'm going to go with the smaller one first. Uh-huh. Yeah. yeah it has it's to just be. called being safe at that point. Exactly, exactly. But yeah, that's it, everyone. Thank you very much for watching. We'll see you guys next week. And say goodbye, Zen. Goodbye, everybody. Peace out. I realize I don't have a call out specifically for the ending of Shonen Archive. Uh, that the my my there's no like archive ended. There's no special saying. <laughs> there's <laughs> I got nothing. I just gotta say goodbye. <laughs> Peace uh, out. Hey, you know it's it's very personable. People like to have goodbyes. Said to them. It's true, but the unfortunate thing is that now when I say goodbye to people, I keep doing it like it's one of my videos. <laughs> <laughs> it feels Goodbye, very everybody. Goodbye, everybody. I mean, you you say it yourself when we end this call. You, I go like, all right, uh, that's enough for today. <laughs> <laughs> like it's one hundred percent. That's just how I say goodbye to people. <laughs> <laughs> goodbye, everybody. <laughs>